So um, we've talked about this a little bit before, but galaxies tend to be found in galaxy clusters. So the Milky Way and Andromeda, for instance, are two galaxies, the largest galaxies that are within our own local group. Um, M33 is a third but smaller spiral galaxy that's also in our local group. And when we look at the distances to galaxies, even within our local group, um, they're pretty far. There are also dwarf galaxies and other small minor galaxies. Some of them orbit the Milky Way, some of them orbit Andromeda, and some of them are just kind of scattered around in between those two major galaxies in the local group. So our Magellanic clouds, those are our major dwarfs, but we have others. We've talked about the Sagittarius dwarf and the Canis major dwarf. Those are two that the uh, Milky Way is currently tearing apart and pulling out into tidal streams, right? So a galaxy cluster can be a fairly busy place um, with galaxies. And I just wanna give you a little bit of a feel for how dense it is. So here's a cartoon of our local group. Um, the whole box is almost a megaparsec across. So here's the Milky Way. Um, its dwarfs are relatively nearby. There's other smaller galaxies kind of scattered between the Milky Way and Andromeda. And then Andromeda is down here on the lower left with its companions. And so the distance between Milky Way and Andromeda is, you know, are around this scale, about three quarters of a megaparsec. And when you compare that to the sizes of the galaxies themselves, these are, you know, drawn to scale, um, you can see that the distances between galaxies is quite a bit uh, smaller than, or larger than the size of the galaxies themselves. So I would have to say, you know, about 10 times larger um, the distance between galaxies than uh, the diameter of galaxies themselves. All right. So this is just our local group, but this is not the only galaxy cluster we know of. Um, the Virgo cluster is the closest kind of cluster neighbor to our, to our local group. And that's um, 20 million light years away. Um, and the Virgo cluster is a very rich cluster. That's the terminology that astronomers use, rich cluster versus poor cluster. So Virgo is very rich. There's a lot of galaxies, thousands of galaxies compared to only about 50 galaxies in our local group. So some galaxy clusters are quite busy places, um, but you can still see the major theme. Um, not all of the, the points of light here are galaxies. Some of these are stars, but the distances between galaxies especially the major galaxies is again, much greater than the sizes of the galaxies themselves. So we've already seen how hard it is to measure even the distance to you know, the globular clusters in our own Milky Way's halo. Uh, and it's only gonna get more difficult to measure longer and longer distances. So that's the challenge that we're up against. So I wanna review some of the previous distances that we talked about in our cosmic distance ladder. Um, here are some of them in no particular order. Uh, first, there was the met uh, method of parallax that we talked about. Um, that's the effect where if uh, you measure at different times of year as the Earth, then you can see the stars shifting on a background of fixed stars. So we can use the parallax method in some trigonometry to calculate their distance. Um, the method of variable stars has come up a couple times, right? Remember Henrietta Swan Leavitt discovered the Cepheid variable stars, and then those were used to measure um, distances to Andromeda. So that's our first, you know, intergalactic distance measurement. And then the RR Lyrae variable stars used a similar method, but for a different type of variable star to measure the distances to globular clusters in our Milky Way. Then we talked about radar. Um, that's where you basically just bounce light off of some nearby object like the planets. Uh, and just use the time of travel for that light to calculate distance. And then there's a method called spectral parallax or spectroscopic parallax. Um, I don't think we went into this in any detail, um, but this is where you use the color of a star and the brightness of a star to estimate the relative distances to Earth. So for these three methods, um, the variable star method and the spectral parallax method and the parallax method um, we need to use some measure of the brightness, right, to, to calculate a distance. 
that's not true. You don't need to do that for parallax, but for the variable star method and spectral parallax method, we need to measure the apparent brightness and then use some other method to get the absolute uh, magnitude. All right. So um, we've kind of looked at this cosmic distance ladder this way before and noted that there are a couple different cutoff points where different methods are useful. So some methods are only useful within the solar systems, others are useful out to farther distances. So I wanna ask you with that framework in mind, which of these gives the correct order for the cosmic distance ladder where the nearest objects are at the top, the farthest are at the bottom. All right, I'm seeing most votes for D now and that's exactly right. So radar is the most useful within our own solar system. Parallax is only good for nearby stars um, and then variable stars gets us all the way to um, Andromeda. So we know that the variable stars are uh, quite a good method for galactic distances. All right, so this is the refresher. Um, again, just saying what I said before, radar for the solar system. Parallax goes out to about 200 parsecs. Um, the spectral parallax method to about 10,000 parsecs. Um, and then variable stars goes out to three times 10 to the seventh parsecs. So that's about um, 30 megaparsecs. All right. So um, if we kind of situate this as an actual ladder that has rungs, then I would say that these are the first four rungs in order, right? And our mission is to add more rungs to the distance ladder because even this method of variable stars is going to break down at longer distances. 